going on everyone? My name is Evan Jevnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. Jurassic Park Rebirth brought some fan favorite dinosaurs back to the big screen and even some new faces too. But just how accurate were these dinosaurs? This video we're breaking down five dinosaurs featured in the film and uncovering the real science behind each one. From the tiny Aqualops to the aquatic and mysterious Spinosaurus and the iconic Velociraptor, this video is your crash course in movie myth versus fossil fact. So let's jump right in. First up is Aqualops, a dinosaur that might not look like much in Jurassic Park Rebirth, but in terms of its real life importance, it's a huge deal. The real Aqualops is one of the oldest known Ceratopsians from North America, dating back about 109 million years. As you can tell from the name, Ceratopsians were a whole group of horned dinosaurs closely related to Triceratops. But Aqualops was quite different from most Ceratopsians. This little plant eater was only about the size of a wiener dog, would have been about two feet, 60 centimeters long, and weighed only about three pounds or one and a half kilograms. Didn't have any large horns or frills and it probably walked on two legs as well but it did have a sharp little horn near its nose now here's where it's really cool aqualops helps fill in a huge gap in our understanding of how horned dinosaurs migrated early ceratopsians actually originated in asia dinosaurs like these were quite common in asia about 109 million years ago but were unheard heard of in North America. Now this little dinosaur was one of the first species to migrate over an ancient land bridge called the Bering Strait and it's North America. Now this is actually the same land bridge that early humans crossed when we migrated from Asia into North America too. This land bridge only appears when sea level drops. Thus sea level was low enough 109 million years ago for this land bridge to appear and for Aqualops to migrate over into North America. After this migration, Ceratopsians became much more common in North America and got much bigger. In the movie, it's mainly a supporting character, but in science, Aqualops is a game changer. Now let's talk about Titanosaurus, a dinosaur that sounds massive and epic, and yet it's not a real dinosaur. It's not that it's a made-up dinosaur, it's that the bones of this animal have a very complicated history. So Titanosaurus was first named in 1877 from fragmentary fossils found in India. Now at the time, it was thought to represent a distinct type of long neck dinosaur. But as the years went on, scientists found more complete fossils from India from other long neck sauropods. Now these included dinosaurs like Isosaurus and Janosaurus. When paleontologists compared the fossils of Titanosaurus to other sets of fossils, they realized that these original fossils were too incomplete and not unique enough to clearly separate it from other well-known sauropods. So today, it's not considered a valid species, even though we know for a fact that there were really big long neck dinosaurs that lived in India. But here's a twist. Even though Titanosaurus isn't officially valid anymore, its legacy lives on. The entire group of sauropods from the Cretaceous called the Titanosaurus still carry its name. They become some of the biggest and most successful long neck dinosaurs to ever exist. Much like in the movie, these sauropods were some of the biggest animals to ever walk the earth. Some species like Renatus, Argentinosaurus, and Patagotitan could easily reach over a hundred feet in length. Now these dinosaurs were able to reach such impressive heights for several reasons. One is that they had a surprising amount of bird-like features. Now all sauropods had hollow bones, which means that they had pores inside their bones that were really large. Hollow bones are what makes birds light enough to be able to fly. But this made the bones of sauropods exceedingly light for how big they were and kept them from being crushed under their own weight. Now sauropods also also had air sacs just like a bird. This allowed them to extract more oxygen with each breath, which is something our lungs just can't do. With more oxygen in their bodies, they could grow to massive sizes, even though the amount of oxygen was not very different from today. But they had one major feature that was unlike birds. So new research is suggesting that sauropods were not strictly warm-blooded like birds were. So birds can both generate their own body heat and maintain a constant temperature. And because sauropods are usually found in hot environments like deserts or equatorial environments, it's thought that they could generate their own body heat 
heat, but they couldn't maintain a constant internal temperature. Now, by allowing the environment to add additional heat to their bodies, they could have their metabolism work on overdrive and support such a massive body. So as the movie shows, the island would have been a perfect place for Titanosaurus to live, even if it wasn't technically a real dinosaur. Now we come to Spinosaurus, which has gone through more makeovers than any other dinosaur in the franchise. Now, if you remember from Jurassic Park 3, you'll know it looks totally different now. So why is this Spinosaurus different from the one in Jurassic Park 3? While it might be explained away in the story, there's actually a scientific reason why. Originally discovered in 1912, the first fossils were actually destroyed in World War II. For decades, Spinosaurus was a mystery often imagined as a dinosaur similar to T-Rex, but with slender jaws and a sail on its back. But all that changed in the 20 teens when new, more complete fossils from Morocco revealed a much weirder animal. It had short hind limbs, dance bones, and even a paddle-like tail. Now all this together suggests that Spinosaurus was totally different from all other meat-eating dinosaurs. It may have been an active swimmer, using rivers and coastal habitats to hunt fish. In fact, we even have fossils from giant fish that lived alongside it with bite marks that could have only been left by a Spinosaurus. It's estimated that a Spinosaurus could deliver a bite force of over 11,000 newtons. That's 10 times stronger than the bite force of a human and almost the same amount of bite force as a saltwater crocodile. Now in Jurassic Park Rebirth, it's portrayed as an aquatic predator, but scientists still debate just how much time it actually spent in the water. Regardless of how impeccable of a swimmer it was, it's stumpy legs and probably too slow to hunt any dinosaur on land, which allowed other predators to become more dominant land predators than Spinosaurus. Its changing appearance reminds us that paleontology is always evolving, and even the most popular dinosaurs can still surprise us. Before we get to the next dinosaurs, I want to take a moment to thank the amazing people who make these videos possible. My Daily Dino Direct members. Thank you guys so much for your support and passion for paleontology. Because of you guys, this channel can put out videos that are as understandable and as accessible as possible. If you want to help support this channel and take your dinosaur knowledge to the next level, then you should definitely consider joining Daily Dino Direct. You'll get early access to these YouTube videos and you'll get exclusive masterclass lectures from me and other leading paleontologists on cutting edge dinosaur research that's happening right now. So go to my website and sign up. Now let's talk about Jurassic Park's T-Rex, which is an iconic and terrifying predator. But how does it compare to the real T-Rex? In real life, Tyrannosaurus Rex was even more impressive in some ways and surprisingly different different in other ways. For one, it wasn't as skinny as it's portrayed in the movies. T-Rex would have been way thicker and filled with strong muscles. It also had small bony horns on its eyebrows, its cheeks, and its snout. While not strong enough to be used as weapons, these would have been very helpful in protecting itself from rival rexes biting down on its face or for attracting mates. Its vision was far better than the movie suggests. It didn't rely on movement to see prey. It had forward-facing eyes, giving it binocular vision similar to hawks or owls, so standing still wouldn't have helped at all. In fact, its eyesight may have been several times sharper than a human's. Scientists estimate that it would have been able to distinguish between objects that were over three 3.7 miles or 6 kilometers away. We can only distinguish between objects a mile or 1.6 kilometers away. But its eyes weren't its only powerful sense. Scientists have CT scanned the brain case of T-Rex and found that it was also had impeccable senses of smell and hearing. Now the portion of its brain that controlled smell was bigger than any other meat-eating dinosaur. And it's thought that it could pick up the scent of a carcass better than a modern-day vulture. As for its hearing, T-Rex was optimized for hearing at least low frequency sounds. But what about speed? Now the movie shows it's sprinting down a jeep, but scientists think it was not that fast. We have to remember that a fully grown T-Rex was nearly 10,000 pounds, or 8 metric tons, which would have weighed it down a lot. Instead, it seems that it would have preferred to stalk its prey to death through endurance hunting, similar to wolves. The special foot of T-Rex was relatively condensed, which helped it conserve energy with each step, and its tail acted as a balance to also save energy. It's estimated that T-Rex would have spent most of its time walking at a pace of about 2.8 miles per hour or 4.6 kilometers per hour. But if it really needed to get up and go, it could probably sprint up to 12 to 17 miles per hour or 19 to 27 kilometers per hour. So you still might be able to outrun it. Overall, the movie does a decent job portraying this dinosaur, but I think the real T-Rex was way more terrifying. 
Finally, we have the Velociraptors, which were smart, scaly, human-sized killing machines. But in reality, they were smaller, feathered, and not quite geniuses. The real Velociraptor was just over six feet or two meters long. It weighed only about 30 pounds or 15 kilograms. But one major difference was feathers. Jurassic World Rebirth gives us scaly raptors with a little bit of feathers on their head. But fossils clearly show quill knobs on their forearms, evidence that they had feathers and probably used them for insulation or display. Now feathers go back really far in the family tree of dinosaurs. So we can confidently say that Velociraptor, and in fact all raptors, would have been covered in feathers. Now the intelligence of Velociraptor is not as cut and dry as the movie portrays it. It did have an impressive brain for a dinosaur, but it wasn't capable of complex thinking and problem solving like humans. Instead, it had hyper efficient senses. Its hearing in particular would have helped it pick up high frequency sounds that we couldn't even hear. So no, it wasn't opening doors in the way the movie suggests. But was it hunting in packs? I'm not quite sure. We know that the relatives of Velociraptors were capable of hunting dinosaurs that were nearly 10 times bigger than them. Realistically, this probably took some type of coordination and social structure. But unfortunately, we don't have any footprints or trackways that support the idea of them hunting in packs. So while movie raptors are thrilling, the real ones were way more bird-like, but no less fascinating. There you have it. Five prehistoric stars from Jurassic World Rebirth and how they stack up against our fossil record. And while the movie gets a few things right, most of these dinosaurs have deeper, more fascinating stories than Hollywood gives them credit for. From continent crossing migrations to misunderstood predators, the science behind these species is just as thrilling, if not more so, than fiction. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. And if that's true, then you should subscribe to my newsletter. Each month, I gather every single dinosaur study that's been published, and I send it directly to you absolutely free. You're not going to find a newsletter like this anywhere else on the internet, so go to my website and sign up today. And merch is now available on the Daily Dino Guy shop. If you want to get the coolest dinosaur shirts like this one, or hoodies and stickers, then head on over to my website and grab yours today. If you enjoyed this breakdown of Jurassic World Dinosaurs, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video discussing dinosaurs. And don't forget to check out Daily Dino Guy on all social media to get even more fascinating dinosaur facts. Until next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.